but but by the end, uh, in theory, in theory, okay, uh, you cannot hide the code. Right. In theory, okay. In practice, you know, everything can be hacked. What is the biggest challenge? Well, actually, two. Let me go back here. Let's let's ask, answer this question first. For the audience, the term open source gets thrown around all the time. Okay, and I think a lot of people misunderstand what open source actually means. Okay, so let's start by defining what open source is. Okay, so open source is software where you can see the raw code behind it. And if, and in general, depending upon which license it is is licensed under, if you make any changes to it, you have to report back those changes. The own the author of that open source software can decide whether or not to incorporate it, incorporate it. But in general, they want to see how you changed it, and they may want to incorporate the changes that you implemented, they may not want to incorporate them. Maybe they create a different branch and it becomes a completely different product, but that's generally open source. Anybody can view the code. Anybody can change the code as they see fit, but the author of the open source software is the one who's really controlling how the, the core be, gets changed and gets delivered to the open source community. What are the biggest challenges Obviously, in open source, there is a really there's a fine line between, um, you know, how you commercialize open source. There's a really how do I how do we make money off of the labor that goes into writing open source software, right? Because there's a very, very fine line about where you're allowed to make money and where you're not allowed to make money. Otherwise, it's no longer you know open source. So. What are the biggest challenges in working in the open source world? And by the way, I wasn't going to bring this up, but I, I, I'm segueing into another question. But what are the biggest challenges for you guys? I mean, Oriole, you're, you know, Nexion is is a is purely private software, intellectual property, right? You have what is it? I I I don't remember the name of the platform, but it, it's M I I. You mean right? Mimetic, yeah. yeah. That that is not open source. That's owned by no. the, right. That's but, proprietary software, and then. Klaus operates in the open source world. What is the biggest challenges in the open source world? So what are the big, uh, uh, getting contributors obviously would be one, right? But it, you've touched on a couple of them where I see all the time in the open source world, which is, you know, everybody wants everything to be free until it costs them something, right? Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. You know, so Klaus, what are, what are the biggest challenges for you in the open source world? Yeah, exactly this, that it's really hard to build a community at the end. Um, so you need somebody they, they, that they really, or some people, they really do nothing else than just uh, maintaining. Right. That was, was also the success, I think, of tools like Node Red because they had a really great community from the very beginning because the people love what, it, what they saw. Also, technicians could uh, really go into this, not just software developers. So that means, and that's also what I really love on, on these tools because it's not splitting OT and IT world that really brings it together. Um, that also technical, which some, which has just some JavaScript understanding can provide me the idea. <laughs> so, and I can make better software from it as a software developer also. And so, so I think it really needs uh, for open source these point uh, to, to build a community with people can together. People, can people develop nodes for node red that they sell, that they take to market and sell, right? It's normally yeah, you, really easy, but this. Yeah, you, you can, but but by the end, uh, in theory, in theory, okay, uh, you cannot hide the code. Right. In theory, okay. In practice, you know, everything can be hacked, okay. But in theory, uh, it's it's quite difficult to hide the code, and then uh, when you commercialize that, the difficulty will be control the number of licenses that you sh have sold. No? Because and Node then, Red. Node Red by default wasn't built to be able to manage like you know it doesn't have a concept of multi-tenant licensing or yeah. or no individual node like it doesn't have a concept for Correct. so it also it wasn't concerned with obfuscation of the raw code that that you use to build a node um, and so obviously that becomes problematic right but but in theory you can sell your node you can write a node and you can sell it to the market can, if you have a commercial node available can can people still download it using node package manager or do you generally have to go get that from the person selling it right or uh, do you see scenarios where there are commercial nodes available through npm yes mm -hmm. 
Yes. So it's normally it's a, there's a catalog in Node-RED. You can extend the catalog so that your customers really see the packages in the list, uh, like they ever see other packages also. You can Got also it. change yeah. the catalog that they just see your packages and nothing else. That's also a way yeah. to go. Yeah. With. And uh, also you can work with yeah. the NPM RC, what we do for Flowforge at the moment to, yeah. to, to yeah. go this way. By, uh, by the way, important yeah. to notice about that, okay? You, you have a catalog, but not a marketplace. So the management of the license and the control of payments and ETC has to be managed by yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's important. Eh? So you can extend the catalog, but not a marketplace. There is no marketplace. 